Hello again, it's Locke Noob, and in the first part of my mini-series on tensioning, we looked at um, my trusty Master Lock 3 um, and the types of tension tools which are available to uh, uh, tension locks with. Um, I just want to do a very short part two video um, on how you might want to tension another common lock type, like the Euro solder here. Uh, and how putting too much or too little tension on can affect um, the pins and the way they bind. So, there's the um, keyway. What we uh, put in there to tension it? Well, uh, depends which way you're going to pick it. You could pick it this way around, um, and that's okay as long as um, this bit of the tension wrench doesn't dig into the surrounding part of the core. But that's okay. If you're picking it uh, and, uh, clockwise, and I tend to like to do that, maybe it's because I'm right-handed, um, that's fine too. But if you're not careful, you can end up having this, which is wrench slip. That is horrible. And you can lose all your set pins. It's a real pain. Um, alternatively, um, you could use a very, very thin, skinny uh, wrench. And actually, that feels quite nice uh, this way. But if I was picking it anti-clockwise, then I could get um, uh, wrench slip the other way around, which means that... Um, this part of the wrench is digging now into the outside of the, the core and um, may actually stop the core from rotating any further. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is if you end up sticking something too big in here, you might end up with very little room to actually put your picks because you've taken it all up with the wrench. Um, and for those of you in the know, um, yes, of course you could use uh, top of the keyway tensioning, but that's for part three of the series. So let's just go with uh, this nice skinny tension wrench, stick that in there, turn it around, move a bit closer so you see all the pins, um, and I'm going to put too little tension on. Too little tension, put my pick to the back, uh, just trying to feel all the pins, so, and with too little tension, I can go along um, each pin and turn and they by and large just spring back. I can't feel any binding pins at all. Um, they, they all just seem to be springy. Um, and that's what happens when you have little or no tension on. Increase the tension dramatically. Um, and I, I don't know if you can see this bowing, but I put a lot of pressure on here. Then as I'm feeling along, uh, by pin, pin visor binder, pin Four's a binder, pin three's bound, pin two's bound, pin one isn't bound, funny enough, uh, but nearly all the rest are bound. Um, and and the other thing is, is if I do press down, I've got a very, this is a 15,000th pick right here, it's very, very thin. If I put so much pressure on that I've got all these pins binding, they themselves become very hard to push down, and I might end up bending my, uh, my pick. Of course, the temptation is to just get a bigger um, and bigger, um, you know, and stronger and stronger uh, set of picks and really get in there. But you know, you'll be you'll be probably bending your tools and putting overdue strain on 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 the lock. So why don't you just back off a bit? Oh, actually, before I move on, another downside to putting too much tension on is um, if I find a binding pin, I can show you maybe um, is that if you put too much tension on, um, it's, you're more likely to when you overset a pin it will stay overset, okay? What happens when I just back off the um, tension a little bit? There you go. Um, it's actually clicked back, and I think you'll find that this pin is now actually, or was, um, uh, bound properly. So if I got the tension right first time, I wouldn't have overset that pin. So let's try and get the pin, let's get the tension right, somewhere in the middle. What is that secret thing? You won't know. You've got to pick up a lock, pick up a tension wrench, and have a feel. You'll know when, you put in your pick and you put just enough um, tension on that you can feel each pin bind in turn and give a little click when you press it down. You hear those clicks? And go back to the back again. And there we go, we've got an open. So when you've got the tension just right, you should feel the pin set, you'll hear those clicks. If you get it wrong, you've probably got lots of them which feel stiff, you've over-tensioned, um, 
if you've got it um, wrong the opposite way around put too little tension on they'll all feel very bouncy um, alternatively they could feel bouncy because you overset a pin and uh, all the other ones are bouncing them down freely because none of them will bind then um, one more thing to just bear in mind before I uh, finish part two of this is what why else might I not hear those pins click nicely as I pick the locks and it could just be because the lock is rubbish sometimes very 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 cheap locks are just made with such sloppy tolerances and that have all sorts of burrs in the metal and uh, you know they're horrible so they feel weird and they don't click in the same way and they, they don't give you the feedback in the same way another thing is is that they could actually be dirty imagine if this has been used for 10 years you know um as the key has gone in and out it's um it's grated off metal it's all deposited in the springs and on the pins and stuff on there with grease and wd-40 or whatever else somebody stuck into the lock over the years and that can mean that the the lock uh, feels um dull on the inside and doesn't give you that feedback okay so if you want to have a nice crisp clicking on your pins um then obviously a newer lock is the way forwards um uh, but don't expect that to happen in all nice uh, locks if they've been used um, and also tension is 90 percent of the game you get that right you're going to hear more of those clicks you're going to feel more of those pin sets and you're going to know uh, what's happening inside of that lock more often all right happy picking i'll see you next time